Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Hope you're enjoying your Wednesday. Happy hump day. Guess what day it is? It's today and you're gonna get blasted with some hot news today. So that's what's gonna be happening. Uh, I just wanna give you a little bit of housekeeping right up front. We are going to be moving offices for the UFD Tech Channel in the near future. So pardon our mess as we transition stuff. Videos are gonna be shot in new locations and it's just gonna be like things changing all the time. So thank you for all your support. I'm excited for the new office that we're gonna be moving into. It's gonna be a great next step here in our United States journey of being UFD Tech. So. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into the first bit of news, which is AMD confirmed ray tracing. So at the CES keynote, AMD really didn't talk about any of their higher end GPUs or what they have coming down the pipeline later this year. It was mostly focused on their mobility stuff as well as the RX 5600 XT. But in an interview that came out with a non-tech afterwards, where a few of the journalists at CES were able to sit down with Dr. Lisa Su and ask her a few questions regarding everything going on with AMD, its competition with Intel, its GPU division, as well as Zen 3, we got some actually good answers. And it is that ray tracing is confirmed to come out on AMD graphics cards this year. Year. So I'll read the question. It's coming from somebody over at VentureBeat saying, is real-time ray tracing and graphics going to be as big as NVIDIA says it is? And then Lisa Sue was able to go into her answer saying that, I've said it in the past that ray tracing is important. I still believe that. But if you look at where we are today, it is still very early. We're investing heavily in ray tracing and investing heavily in the ecosystem around it. Both of our console partners have also said they are using ray tracing. You should expect that our discrete graphics as we go through 2020 will also have ray tracing. I do believe though it is still very early and the ecosystem needs to develop. We need more games and more software and more applications to take advantage of it. At AMD, we feel very good about our position on ray tracing. I think it's key to note that with that mention of discrete graphics in 2020, she is talking about potentially, this is my speculation, having hardware accelerated ray tracing built into the graphics cards and not just the fact that the graphics cards will support ray tracing. It will be more than that than just what the support is because currently ray tracing is supported on AMD cards depending on the API you use and how it's implemented. So I think this is a bit more than that and Lisa Sue is confirming that ray tracing is indeed coming to AMD GPUs. So Nvidia is no longer going to hold the crown for RTX on. I don't know if AMD is going to be able to come up with a good enough marketing strategy to beat RTX on, RTX off, and it just works because everything just works. Everything just works. And Lisa Sue, you're going to have to come up with your own tagline to make this work, to really sell it to consumers, but I believe in you and I believe that AMD can work. And then with regards to a higher end AMD GPU to potentially compete with the RTX 2080 Ti, Lisa Su said that I know those on Reddit want a high end Navi. You should expect that we will have a high end Navi and that it is important to have it. The discrete graphics market, especially at the high end is very important to us. So you should expect that we will have a high end Navi, although I don't usually comment on unannounced products. So. Who knows when that's actually gonna be coming. Um, she wasn't very clear on that, but then with regards to Zen 3 and the next generation of CPUs, it was asked if we would see Zen 3 this year, considering that the roadmap and release cycles of the previous Zen launches were 12 to 14 months. Lisa said that you should expect that we're going to be very aggressive with the CPU roadmap, went through a whole non-answer, and then finally said, rather than ask me the question three times, Ian, let me be clear, you will see Zen 3 in 2020. 20. So big Navi coming, maybe not in 2020. Zen 3 definitely going to be seen in 2020. And then ray tracing on AMD graphics cards definitely coming in 2020. I keep wanting to say NVIDIA cards because I'm so used to ray tracing being on NVIDIA, but no, definitely coming to AMD. Follow that up. There's a little bit more AMD news. Uh, RX 5600 XTs have been unveiled at CES. Power Color is showing off their Liquid Devil, but in case you want the whole throwdown on all of the available RX 5600 XTs, there's a link in the video description to video cards, which has every single 5600 XT that's been announced so far, so you can peruse them to your heart's desire until they launch later this month. 
Now let's talk about something that we don't have a launch date for, which is Intel's Comet Lake CPUs, which we're expecting to have up to 10 cores. It does appear that we got benchmarks leaked as well as images leaked of the 10 core, what we're expecting to be called the 10900K on the new LGA 1200 socket. This appears to be a Dell B460, so it's clear that the OEMs are even producing their own motherboards for this already, so it should be close to launch. Uh, the indication is that the bio and the chips are super early engineering samples though with it only being able to boost up to 3.3 gigahertz and not the 5.3 gigahertz that we saw on a previous leaked Intel slot. So still more work to be done. Obviously this could be just an early engineering sample. We'll see. We will watch this one as it develops. One thing that's not developing with Intel that they're actually showing off at CES this year though is their modular Nook, which plugs into a PCI Express slot and has all of the brains of a computer. The Intel Nook hosts the CPU, the RAM, and the storage on it, and you plug it into a motherboard which would have the PCI Express slot, but you would think it already has a CPU. Well, the good people over at Razer have unveiled the Razer Tomahawk, which is designed for this exact purpose. It's a 10 liter computer case that allows you to plug in the i9 Nook, and then also comes with a graphics card that you plug in as well with the power supply, and then everything should come in there. So you have the Intel high-powered compute element with the rest of the stuff from Razer, and in case you wanna upgrade the CPU later on down the line for when Intel actually does come out with 10 nanometer CPUs, well then you can just swap out the brain, and then you keep the graphics card. And it's just a whole plug and play scenario where you're able to change things on the fly whenever you want. It's like building a PC with slots. It's cool to say the least, I enjoy the concept. It should allow for a lot of people to get more familiarity with building a PC. It'll simplify the process a bit, but at the same time, it also dumbs it down and I really don't see this catching on. So it's a cool concept, which is what CES is all about, concepts. Unless you're AMD, in which case it's for confusing your consumers. I totally should have put this with the other AMD stuff, but I messed that up. Anyways, we got some new information regarding the new denotations of AMD's FreeSync, the adaptive sync technology that makes sure that you don't have screen tearing when you're playing games. Well now, on top of FreeSync, we're getting FreeSync Premium and FreeSync Premium Pro, whereas FreeSync 2 HDR is going away. AMD is really screwing up this marketing. Anyways, FreeSync Premium is slightly better than regular FreeSync because it, you need at least 120 hertz with minimum 1080p resolution, and then it also can come with low frame rate compensation, which means you actually get the benefits of Adaptive Sync all the way down to the lower refresh rates, whereas a lot of the cheaper FreeSync monitors could only go down to 48 hertz. 48 to 75 was a typical range that you would find on a budget free sync monitor that can no longer happen it has to be over 120 hertz in order to allow for the low frame rate compensation and that's FreeSync premium FreeSync premium pro gives you everything that you get with FreeSync Premium, except for it has HDR capabilities, and then also low latency and standard dynamic range and high dynamic range. So FreeSync H2 HDR is becoming FreeSync Premium Pro, and FreeSync Premium is just a better version of FreeSync. Confusing nomenclature, AMD, please stop. You're getting as bad as Intel. Now that FreeSync has a Pro variant, it also looks like the Switch might be getting a Pro variant, with DigiTimes reporting that there's indication that there should be a new launch of a console of the Nintendo Switch later this year that would be a higher-end class device. There's a good indication that it will have a higher-end SoC, better CPU, better GPU, taking advantage of the architectural changes that have happened since the original Switch's SoC was designed, which is on 28 nanometers. They could go all the way down to 12 nanometers with NVIDIA's Turing architecture. And then there's also reports that it's gonna be made out of a magnesium alloy body, as opposed to the plastic body that's on the current Switch. Magnesium alloy has a couple of benefits. One, it's actually super durable, magnesium alloy, it's made out of metal. But then two, it's nearly as light as plastic. So you can have the same portability but then also get better rigidity and uh, better travel friendliness from getting beaten up in your backpack. But you all want to put this next article in your backpack because Inwin is showing off their butterfly chassis, which uh, I actually only found this article. I wasn't able to find a video of this at CES. Maybe our editor will be able to find it in the meantime. But this is one of the craziest things that I've seen. It's 80 ocean blue color transparent scales that move and the wings have adjustable RGB and there's a projector built in and it can be AI controlled with your voice or motion and it's just 
it's the craziest case I've ever seen. In Wayne going above and beyond themselves than I ever thought possible, which is the exact opposite of what Samsung has done because they're gonna be launching the Google Ho or the Galaxy Home Mini, excuse me, er in early 2020. We're expecting that this is gonna get announced at the Galaxy Unpacked event that is happening on February 11th. However, they're gonna be launching the Galaxy Home Mini without actually showing off the giant like little tower thing, the Galaxy Home. They're just not talking about it. Apparently Samsung hasn't decided whether or not they're gonna release the regular Galaxy Home. So it's just the mini at the moment. One thing that we can expect won't be released is OnePlus's Concept One phone. The phone uses electrochromic glass to turn the rear display covering the cameras opaque to allow it so that you don't see the phones or in video mode, it acts as an ND filter. Actually, NKBHD covered this in video right up here but basically it's using the same technology that you can find in some of the McLaren supercars where they actually dim the sunroof that's overhead and they're essentially using that. The reason it's not gonna be coming to a phone anytime soon is because it's just too gosh dang expensive, but it is a cool concept. One thing that OnePlus is rolling out that isn't just a concept is its optimized battery charging. This is something that you're already able to find in a couple of other phone manufacturers. Apple already has implemented this, but essentially it makes sure that it follows your routines, checking when you usually wake up, when your first alarm of the day or the first event of the day is, and making sure that it gets to 100% charge right as that's happening, as opposed to making sure that it's 100% charged all through the night. So it'll charge up to 80% and then 100 minutes before that event or alarm, it'll make sure it starts charging up again to 100%. This is to promote battery longevity over the course of the device because remaining at a high charge for long periods of time is bad for the device. But what's good for our devices is high refresh rate displays. And that's what Razer appears to be showing off in their blades coming out with 300 Hertz models. No ETA on when they're gonna release those. It'll probably be with Intel 10 series CPUs. So probably expect a refresh as soon as Intel's ready to do that. MSI, however, is also announcing that they're gonna have in their GE66 Raider 300 Hertz IPS. But not only that, they're gonna have the same battery that we talked about in yesterday's hot news from the GS66 Stealth, which is the 99. 9 watt hour battery, which is the highest limit on legal flights. So there you go, as opposed to legal flights where you're smuggling drugs. I think the GE66 Raider looks really good with the RGB strip at the front, but that's not what we're talking about right now. Although that RGB strip on the MSI laptop looks good, you won't be able to see it with this next one because the Pimax VR headset has been announced with a few updates, including one that goes up to 180 hertz in 1440p panels per eye. That's craziness. Their highest end one is a 4K panel per eye, which can go up to 75 hertz. But if you drop it down to 1440p, you can do 120 hertz on each eye. Has super wide field of view, crazy. And the price actually isn't terribly expensive. Pimax finally coming out with the VR headsets that they originally imagined with their Kickstarter, except for now it's real. You don't typically see this when they fail to meet the mark of their Kickstarter, but then keep iterating and then become an actually good product. This is not what's gonna happen with their Mercedes-Benz Avatar-inspired EV concept. The Vision AVTR is the weirdest concept car that I've seen in my lifetime. It's got like scale flaps on the back for interaction and communication through the bionic flaps. I don't understand it. This is too highbrow for me. Mercedes says that they're not coming out with it. It's supposed to have like graphene batteries, which is the technology that's just like discovered and not even implemented in cars. Mercedes going ham on that which is what Snapchat and TikTok have been doing when it comes to deep fakes, rolling them out into their apps. Well, Facebook has said that they're banning deep fakes, actually just deceptive deep fakes, according to what they're saying. If the deep fakes are used in a video in a way that would cause to mislead the person who's watching it in a nefarious way, basically like lying, but splicing videos is okay, but not faking the video. That's a really weird, like, you could splice my words to make me say something I didn't say by putting words together, but if you make my face go onto somebody else, that's, that's a no-no. Deep fakes are still allowed on Facebook for uh, comedy and satire reasons, so it's not a, not a nationwide ban. And then the last article that I wanna talk about in hot news today is the fact that TiVo is still around. I had no idea. At CES, they're launching a brand new $50 little dongle thing that allows you to get your streaming apps but then also the TiVo service, which gives you live TV. I had no idea TiVo was still around. I figured they died off when Netflix came around. How wrong I was. They've adapted, they've overcome. They are better than Blockbuster. 
but I'm not because I'm going to leave you. I'm going to I'm going to be done just like Blockbuster is. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Hot News. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Go ahead and join our Discord if you want to chat about any of the topics that we talked about today. We're always over there on our Discord chatting away, so you can be sure to join the conversation there. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content here at UFD Tech. I'm Brett. Thanks for watching. Bye.